Welcome everybody, my name is Richard at RSEV and this is a test of Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. Now that's quite an unusual car in the UK. In 2023, Tesla released long range rear wheel drive just to fleet buyers, although some then did become available in inventory, but it's not been configurable on the website as a new car. We typically just had a standard range, 60 kilowatt hours in the later versions with the LFP. Uh, then you could have the long range dual motor setup, which was four wheel drive and the 79 kilowatt hour battery in the later versions. This one has the big 79 kilowatt hour battery, gross about 74, 75 usable really but still just the single motor rear wheel drive. Now the single motor rear wheel drives have always been more efficient than the dual motor cars. So this one's got the best efficiency, but with the big battery. And I wanna see exactly how far it can go, what the real world range capabilities are. So let's put it to a real world test. So today uh, we're gonna to take a journey in this car from here in New Milton up to Birmingham in the Midlands and then back again, which should be the best part of 300 miles. It's going to be real world driving test this because it's just started raining, as you can probably see. My hair is getting wet, obviously. Uh, and this car as well, actually, is on continental cross climate tyres. Normally it'd be on Michelin tyres, so that probably won't do it any favours. And driving at 70 miles per hour just about all the way, it should be all motorway journeys, which is actually the kind of least efficient environment for an electric car. So we're going to put it to a good real world test, climate control on, music on, all that kind of stuff. And let's see, even in these conditions, how far this car can really go and what efficiency we get from it. It'll be interesting to find out. Uh, can it do 350 miles? I think it might be able to. That would put it right up there amongst the very best of the long range EVs. It should at least be able to do 300 miles or more because that's what the dual motor cars will do. So this will be interesting to find out. It's unfortunate that the long range rear wheel drive isn't available in the new Highland versions. So like I say, this was only around for a fairly short uh, period of time. Uh, maybe it will come back in the future, uh, but this car promises good things. Let's see what it can do. It's on charge now. It's just finishing, in fact, it's probably just finished now, actually up to 100% state of charge. Trips are reset. Uh, I've actually got to do some office work, so I'm gonna put Serge behind the wheel. Serge, off you go. So as you can see there, not exactly favorable conditions. It's why we normally do a little montage as we're driving along to kind of show what the conditions were on the day of the test. So uh, rainy, <laughs> English summertime, not particularly cold, but you know, very wet, which does impact efficiency. It does seem like these continental uh, tires on this car actually seem to be efficient because even in those conditions, and even though it's nearly all 70 miles an hour motorway journey that, which is again, the least efficient environment, this car on that journey averaged 206 watt hours per mile. Now my 2024 Model 3 Performance, I was just done a trip around Ireland, that's something 280 something watt hours per mile. 206, that's, let's call it five miles per kilowatt hour for motorway in the rain. There's not that many electric cars would do that. So phenomenal efficiency. Now it's used 64 kilowatt hours, so there's still plenty spare. In fact, the car shows there's still 13% remaining and that shows an estimate of 44 miles still possible. Now we've covered 309 miles, which is about the maximum I used to get out of a Model S long range. 
uh, with a bigger battery but less efficient. So we've still got 13% left. So actually, if I say, well, look, we've covered 309 miles based on the fact that we've used 87% and pro rata that to 100% means this car could cover 355 miles between 100% and 0%. And that's good. Now, really, with 64 kilowatts used, we've probably got another 10 kilowatt hours in there, which actually, if you're doing five miles per kilowatt hour, means you're going to do about another 50 miles. That would include the buffer. So I think you can even do more than that if you're going into buffer territory. But like super impressive numbers, especially given the conditions, especially considering it wasn't like A rows, B rows across the countryside, which is more efficient. It was all motorway, basically. So um, amazing car, amazing, really good. But let's talk about the cost of that, because what would that journey have cost us? Well, interestingly with that, um, we could have actually stopped and used supercharge, or Surge could have done Surge Tesla supercharge, because I've got some free Tesla supercharging credits. It actually would, could have cost nothing if you, but let's work out some numbers if you had to pay for the charging, uh, for example, at home, at work. Again, at work here, I've got solar panels. We can just plug this in, sun's out, charge the car up off the solar. It won't really cost anything. Or I could take this car home tonight and charge on my cheap overnight electricity. So at the moment at home, I've got Octopus. It's seven pence per kilowatt hour. So if I charge this overnight, 64 kilowatt hours back up, it would cost me a total of £4.50 to recharge this car, to cover the cost of all that 309 miles. So 309 miles for £4.50. It's good, isn't it? It means that if I covered 10,000 miles and only charged from home overnight, I could cover 10,000 miles for about £150 worth of electricity. It's a good way to put it, isn't it? Very, very cheap. And because this has got such long range, you don't need to use the supercharger as much. You don't need to think about it. Um, in fact, we could have done, and we normally would, because we can get it for free. But the point of this test was to show exactly what it could do. Um, but the longer the range car, the less likely you are to need to use public charge in the first place, which means more of your driving is going to be cheaper. So phenomenal car. What if, though, you're charging this from home and you don't have like cheap overnight tariffs? Um, now, I think the energy cap price at the moment is about 24, 25 pence per kilowatt hour. Let's take the worst case, the 64 kilowatt hours used times by, um, let's say, 25 pence per kilowatt hour. That would have cost 16 pounds, kind of the worst case cost price charging from, from home. So uh, still a lot cheaper than any petrol or diesel would have used. But in reality, if you have an electric car and you do many miles, you do many long distance uh, drives along the day, like the sort of stuff we do, you know, having the overnight tariff or having uh, solar and battery storage at work and stuff like that makes it very, very cheap. Actually, hang on a minute. The video isn't quite finished there. So uh, Serge was just telling me actually that last week he went and collected this car from 120 miles away. And when he collected that, he used this car, which is a standard range rear wheel drive, 2022, 2023. But this car obviously has the smaller battery, 60 kilowatt hours, so it's slightly lighter than that one, which has the bigger battery. So is there an efficiency difference between the two? Also, this car's on Michelin tires, that's the Consensus. Well, then the wet today, they seem very good. Anyway, Serge last week and Lewis did 118 miles in convoy with each other at exactly the same speed, at the same road, at the same time. And now this car actually on that day, not raining, did 198 watt hours per mile. That car, same conditions, did something like 204 watt hours per mile. So there was a slight efficiency difference could be down to tyres, could be down to battery temperatures, could be down to the extra weight of that. But it's so close that ultimately, even though it's got a bit of extra weight to it, it does seem to be very, very, very nearly the same efficiency as the smaller battery one. So, OK, that is it for this video. It's raining. I'm going to get inside. Uh, but I hope that's useful. See you on the next one.